Welcome back to another video of Let's Learn Flight Simulator together where you and I will be learning to fly together. In our today's video, I will be talking about the first module of Microsoft Flight Simulator flight training. The module is Basic Flight. If you want to get all A's in Basic Flight, there is no alternative to practicing over and over again. But I will give you some tips and tricks that can save you from spending a lot of time trying to achieve A's in all the training. I'm not an expert myself, but I've learned what I've learned after spending a lot of time on it so that you can complete these training in no time. The first three training are just for observation, so I will let you watch them by yourself. Let me catch you when we go through the four training attitude or pitch. Feel free to use the YouTube timeline to skip to whatever training you are most interested in. Welcome to Sedona. I'm Captain Jess Molina and I'll be your instructor. For this lesson, we're going to start on the ground and focus on some basic concepts. Fundamentals every pilot needs to know before hitting the skies. This is your plane. A classic. The Cessna 152. Take a look around it. In the simulator, anytime you want you can easily switch to cursor mode. The cursor is handy for interacting with menus and cockpit controls or instruments. As you can see, activating the cursor also displays the toolbar. The toolbar is a quick access menu that allows you to control various aspects of the simulation. Try to find and open the basic controls panel. The basic controls panel is a useful reminder of the button layout for the devices you're currently using. Now try to find and open the camera panel in the toolbar. The camera panel allows you to access the various views and camera modes of the simulation. Go ahead and close all the panels for now. Right now, we are in the external view mode. Let's switch to cockpit view next. In front of you is the yoke, the primary means of controlling the aircraft. In the simulation, you'll be controlling the aircraft with your peripherals of choice. So let's hide the yoke for now. Some instruments allow multiple interactions, for example, rotating a dial clockwise or counterclockwise. In these cases, you need to lock the cursor onto them in order to interact. For example, take a look at the clock in the middle of the dashboard. Go ahead and lock the cursor on it. Now change the clock time. You can unlock the cursor once you're ready. For now, we're done with the cursor, so go ahead and hide it. All right, as we've seen, when you want to look around you, it's easy to rotate the camera. But you can also move it freely in the cockpit to get a better view of anything you want to see. Even through a window to look outside. Pro tip, once you find a camera position you like, you can save a shortcut to easily get back to that view anytime. Now, reset the camera to its original position. Then try switching to your custom one again. All right, that covers all the main camera functions available in the simulation. Try to familiarize yourself with them a bit more. Then reset the camera to its original position whenever you're done. Great! Let's get you familiar with the aircraft, a Cessna 152, and a few commands to navigate it through the skies. In front of you is the yoke. The yoke is like a steering wheel, more or less. 
Turn it left or right to control the ailerons and bank the aircraft into turns. Look at the trailing edge of the wings while turning the yoke to see the effect on the ailerons. Okay. Now, the difference between the yoke and a steering wheel is you can pull or push on the yoke. This controls the elevator at the back of the aircraft to make it climb or descend. Look at the horizontal stabilizer while you pull on the yoke. You can see how it affects the elevator. Nice. Down at your feet are the rudder pedals. They steer the aircraft when you're on the ground. The upper part of the pedals also control your brakes. In the air, they control the rudder at the end of the vertical stabilizer to yaw the aircraft. This is mostly for small corrections. For coordinating turns or compensating for a plane's tendency to pull left during takeoffs and climbs. Look at the vertical tail while operating the pedals to see the effect on the rudder. Great! Last but not least, the throttle is located near the center of the cockpit. Pushing forward will increase power, pulling back will decrease power. First, look at the throttle and select it. Keep it selected and push it forward to increase power. Power is increased. Now, pull it back to decrease power. Power is decreased. Now, we'll do the same without focusing on it. Deselect the throttle. Look away from the throttle and increase power. Set your throttle to idle. Excellent. When the engine is on, you'll be able to see the power change on your RPM indicator. You'll find it on the right side of the dashboard. This tells you how fast the engine is spinning in hundreds of revolutions per minute. Next, take a look at your current speed on the airspeed indicator. It's on the left in the main instrument panel. It measures the speed in knots. To check your altitude, look to the altimeter. It's on the right side of the main instrument panel. The altimeter has three hands, similar to a clock. The long, thick pointer indicates 100-foot intervals. The short, thick one is 1,000-foot intervals. And the long, thin one, 10,000-foot intervals. That's all for today. Next time, we'll see how it feels in the air. I've got to say, you chose a great day to go flying. This session, we'll get started with some basic controls. Sound good? First things first, let's get familiar with your surroundings. Out your side windows, you can see we have great visibility over Sedona today. territory. Beautiful, isn't it? See if you can spot the Sedona Airport.
the runway should be a pretty easy landmark to find. on the airport. We already talked about basic controls while we were on the ground. Time to see how it all feels in the air. The aircraft is currently set to a cruise attitude. The position it should be in for regular flight. All right, now let's try banking into a turn by moving the yoke. I'll go first. under 30 degrees. Go ahead and try rolling to the right. You have controls. Turn right toward the city of Sedona. Sedona, let's try climbing up and down. Gently pull on the yoke to climb. Give it a try. That's good. For the descent, it's the same principle, except you're pushing on the yoke. Go ahead, gently pitch down. Next time, be a bit more gentle on the controls. Okay, time to find the airport again. Look around, and when you found it, make a turn in that direction. That's good. Now that you're more familiar with the aircraft and the surroundings, the next step is to go deeper into handling and techniques. Soon enough, you'll be able to enjoy trips all on your own. demonstrate pitch, I've drawn three lines on the windshield. Notice how the middle line matches the horizon while we're flying level. This is the cruise attitude. The lower dotted line is the climb attitude, and the upper one is the descent attitude. Let's dig deeper into what that means. Pull back gently on the yoke until the climb attitude line matches the horizon. Then maintain that attitude. altimeter, we're gaining altitude. But we're losing airspeed, proving you can't avoid basic physics while making a climb. Excellent. Now let's level back out. Our speed is increasing and our altitude is stable. All right. Push gently on the yoke 
until the descent attitude line matches the horizon. Then maintain that attitude. As expected, with a nose down attitude, our altitude is decreasing while our speed is picking up. Great. Okay, bring us back to level flight. Now your speed is decreasing and your altitude is stable. Nice. That was excellent. Being able to maintain a precise and stable attitude is key to performing all types of maneuvers. For this lesson, we're going to use a line drawn on the windshield to indicate the crew's attitude. I've also added another dotted line to help you bank properly for left turns. Gently move the yoke to the left until the dotted line matches up with the horizon. Then maintain that bank. The longer you are able to maintain your objectives lit green, the higher will be your score. In any training exercise, as long as you are following the objectives very accurately, you will always score high. Excellent. Now let's see you level back out. representing 10 degrees each. As a general rule, you always want to keep your turns under 30 degrees. Start banking right until you're lined up with the second notch to the right on the attitude indicator. Then maintain that 20 degree bank while remaining at the same altitude until I ask you to stop. about the throttle. If you have the need for speed, then the throttle's for you. Full control over the power output of the engine. In the Cessna 152, that relates directly to the RPM displayed on the tachometer. Pull back on the throttle to reduce RPM to 1800. are also decreasing. Excellent. 
Okay, let's throttle back up to 2400 RPM. Lesson, let's take a look at the relationship between attitudes and power settings. Attitude plus power equals performance. We are currently at 5,500 feet in a cruise attitude. The aircraft's nose is positioned under the horizon and cruise power is at 2,300 RPM. Try to reduce power to 2,000 RPM while maintaining 5,500 feet. Great. You probably noticed, to maintain altitude, you need to pitch the nose up. You could just keep pulling on the yoke to hold steady, but that's not really a precise means of control. Probably better to adjust your trim wheel until you don't need to push or pull on the yoke. Drag the trim down when you need to set the nose up. Drag it up to set the nose down. Try adding trim to keep us at 5,500 feet without increasing throttle. Nice. Increase power to 2300 RPM while maintaining 5500 feet. Get us back to a cruise attitude. Excellent. Now adjust the trim. of maneuvering a plane through the air isn't a mystery to you anymore. Now it's time to test the skills you've learned. As you can see, we're cruising at 6,000 feet on a north heading of 360 degrees. Start by descending to 5,500 feet while maintaining a northerly heading. Descending, reduce throttle to avoid overspeed. That's good. Now 
climb to 6,000 feet and turn to a south heading. On the Cessna 152, you need full power to climb effectively. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see videos on other training modules, you can subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.